So I took Lil' Kim, she was hungry. She wanted to do her thing, she writes. So I took Lil' Kim, she was hungry. She wanted to do her thing, she writes. She was like, yo, I was rolling with a bunch of little dudes, you know? Yeah. From around the way, on the corners or whatever. And I was like, yo, once I get on and get my foot right where I need it, I'm going to influence you, rap style. Big, that's my mentor, my best friend, my love. I love him. That's my baby. He's just all that. Right. And he, he gave you the skills and all that. He helped you with your skills. Yeah, um, he's definitely like, you know, my mentor. A lot of people, you know, say he like my moms and everything. Mm -hmm. And and that's a I take that as a compliment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's that man is dope and to me she wanted to do her thing. Before yeah. you met Big, were you already writing rhymes? Yeah. You already yeah. you was already rapping? Mm hmm Did it, how much influence on your style did Big have? A whole lot. I was Big's biggest fan before he even got big. Big, we used to go to block parties, right? Just know. Oh, <laughs> yes. yes. So I mean, you know, like we would, we would really support him, mm -hmm. like you know, because um, me and uh, me and C's sister were best friends. Right. So I knew C's like since he was right little, little. Right, and knew Biggie since before. The deal with Puffin before getting dropped from Uptown and before Bad Boy. Yep. And we before said, all yep. of that. Kim made it known that she liked to rap. Act like she's a rapper. She would write down certain, you know, lyrics to rap songs that she made up. To see that mic there, she just wanted to get on and grab it. What the mic is? Uh, I can dig it, I can dig it. Kim wanted to stay on it, sing, rap, whatever she could do on it. She took advantage of it. She didn't care for it sound right. She just liked the attention. What's your name? Kim and Chris always saw a lot of musicians coming around. Being in that atmosphere, eight, seven, eight hours, we started to soak that up. I had a rapper that I was developing at the time, and I had told Chris and Kim, look, I'm doing a music video for one of my rappers, come down. So we shot the club scene where he was on the stage and he was performing and everybody was going crazy. And that's when Kim's eyes, she was like, this is great. You know, this is something I want to do. She wanted to do her thing. Biggie was one of our first artists. <laughs> Big was doing his thing with Puff. He had his own production. He was trying to get his own money going on. Biggie used to hang out. Kim wanted to have a solid foundation, you know, at that point, Kim was basically in the street making sure she survived. When I was 15 years old, I was kicked out of my house, so I was on the street, I was basically homeless, um, I was forced into doing things that I didn't want to do, you know what I mean? Like, you know, dipping and dabbing with guys that was selling drugs and doing all other types of stuff, and it just, you know, led, one thing led to another, I was, you know, just in the street doing what I have to do to survive and, right. you know, messing with this one and that one. Because um, me and, uh, me and C's sister were best friends. Right. So I knew C's, like, since he was right. little, little. You know, Biggie and I always lived on the same block, so we used to always see each other. And he was like, you know, one thing he heard, I'm not a rhyme. And I used to know she used to rap. Someone that knew Big said that they know this female that really could spit fire. He went up to Lil' Kim and said, so I heard you can rap, so let me see you perform. He was like, yo, you gotta rhyme for me, I heard you gotta rhyme. At first she hesitated, whatever. I was like, I'm not a rhyme. <laughs> but I was playing because, you know, I used to do it for fun. Right. It was just fun. So they wanted to hear, we brought it down to Big, she spit for Big, Big heard. But then when she finally did it, like, oh, man, like, shorty can really spit. You know, I just romped for him one day, and he was like, yo, I'm messing with you. I'm taking you with me. Yeah, and is. he promised, and he always did. I was in Brooklyn with Big, and Big saw so Kim outside. Call Big Mama over here. So she walked over to the car and said, you know, hey, Big, you know, with that little voice. Hi! Hi. What are you playing for? I won't let you drop the window halfway down. <laughs> Excuse me, Big Mama. I said... What do you mean? That's my rapper. The world's gonna love her. Tell me they ain't gonna love her. And then Un, one day Un was like, he had this idea that we should do Junior Mafia and Little Kim should be a lieutenant. Right, all right. Because I don't know guys what to do. He thought it was different for like a rap group to come out with a, 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 a female MC. He thought it was dope. He thought that should have changed the game, which right. it did. <laughs> so, you know, then that's how we did it. We just like okay. went from there and it, it blew up. I
The group was a hodgepodge that included his street hustling friends Chico and Nino, his cousin Lil Cease, and a neighborhood girl who called herself Lil Kim. We got a lot of love for each other. You know what I mean? When you see us, it's just like, it's a closeness, Pia. He just took the time to say, yo, I'm going I'm to help you out and help you get your foot in this industry. Notorious Big discovered and helped to produce this new group's first album. It's no surprise that their first song for Atlantic Records, Players Anthem, has become a hit. Biggie used to tell all the members of Junior Mafia, whoever writes the best rhymes is getting on these records. The first song that they did was a uh, player's anthem. And she wrote the 16 bars and she was like, I can do this record, I can do this record. When I got into the studio with her, I saw a whole new person. I saw this animal, I saw this savage. I was like, oh my God, now I see what Big was talking about. She got into this booth and everybody was like, oh snap. I used to pack packs and Cadillacs. In the act, uh, watch my money stack. Lines in the stores, blocks in the bag. Max and mini markets getting money with the A rap. The rest get confession. Death is the lyrical. They shake your hips. Players grab these with an intro. Teens and minerals. Exclude subliminals. They promise you the game to all you believe in criminals. Uh, I kick the willy with my boots all day. 225 roll by with the windows down halfway. DK and Y, oh my. We put the Junior Mafia album together, nice and tight, you know. It wasn't exactly a five star, but it was more than three and a half. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm good to we go with that, that you know. If I can't make them write rhymes, I can't make them want it, you know what I'm saying? If it's given to you on a silver platter, you can't always expect it to be given to you, you know what I'm saying? Whoever wanted it, he was going to give it to them. You know what I'm saying? Whoever was hungry enough to get it, they stuck around. At that point, I don't think anybody really had their best interest at hand. I took the hungry members. I took Lil' Kim. She was hungry. She wanted to do her thing. She writes. She was like, yo, I need to get my joint out. They feeling me. I'm like, yo, I'm with you. Put it out. There was no female out there that was going to be saying and doing the things that she was going to do. So his vision was to make her the queen of the streets. Everyone wanted the Little Kim album to come. It was like, let's go. Let's just put Kim out. And throughout the writing of that record, you know, she really was raw and honest. Artist Lil' Kim takes hardcore to another level with her own special niche. Sex sells, and she's out to prove it. Kim's lyrics were about the empowerment of women. She wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the male rappers in the same way they were, brutally honest and hardcore. At the age of 21, her debut album rose to number two on the Billboard Hot R&B Rap Chart, and her duet with Puff Daddy, No Time, sat at number one on the Rap Chart for a total of nine weeks. Kim yeah. Kim is a part of Kim is a real life thing. Hey, there's nothing fake about me. Everything I say, I do mostly. All that struggling, all that hard work, or all the emotions she was going through, finally she was where she wanted to be. Really, I mean, you came out hard, and the, the, the name of the album is very true. It's definitely hardcore. hardcore. Mm -hmm. But do you think that is um, an attribute from? being in the streets or coming from the streets? You know, oh, of course. Everything that I talk about is what I know and where I've been. Definitely got people's ears, definitely. You <laughs> definitely have their attention. That's what I'm trying to do. Do you write all your own lyrics? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like Biggie was always going to be there to help me. Mm -hmm. And it's like there's a this and that. But hey, I mean, he got to make sure his honey is tight. Right. You know what definitely. I mean? So what if he changes or he changed that? But I think that that's what makes me who I am is that I have the ability and the mindset to write like this. Early on in your career, how much writing did you do of your own material early on? Early on? I wrote mostly all of my stuff. Trust to tell you. Thing, she writes, I took Lil' Kim, she was hungry. She wanted to do her thing. 
she writes, she's like, yo, I was rolling with a bunch of little dudes, you know? Yeah. From around the way on the corners or whatever. And I was like, yo, once I get on and get my foot right where I need it, I'm going to leave the door open, put y'all on, and that's all y'all the bum rush. You know what I'm saying? You handle how you want to yeah. handle it. If I can't make them write rhymes, I can't make them yeah. want it. You know what I'm saying? If it's given to you on a silver platter, you can't always expect it to be given to you. You know what I'm saying?